In this video we are going to talk about most dangerous Russian weapons. So before starting this video like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel for future updates. The United States of America and Russia are once again competing with one another for the title of great power, which is forcing both countries to improve their military capabilities. Even though Russia's military isn't as powerful as it once was, the country still has a few aces up its sleeve, including a few lethal weapons that are worth keeping an eye on. In the past, we have been critical of Russia's defense industry, but its failures were primarily the result of bureaucratic errors. One example of this would be the Russian Ministry of Defense overestimating requirements while simultaneously underfunding budgets. On the other hand, the designers of weapons in Russia are more than capable and, if given sufficient resources and time, are capable of producing some truly remarkable works of art. Number 7. Diesel Submarines Russia is home to some of the world's most advanced diesel-powered submarines, which are generally considered to be less noisy than nuclear-powered vessels. Diesels have a shorter range than other types of engines, which makes them unsuitable for offensive combat. However, diesel's greater stealth makes them an asset when defending one's home waters. Both the Kilo and Lada classes of diesel attack submarines are quick, stealthy, and well-armed with torpedoes and missiles. Nuclear attack submarines have a significant advantage over traditional diesel attack submarines in a prolonged conflict. Nukes can stay underwater indefinitely, even while maneuvering and fighting, whereas diesels must surface for air after a few hours. Fortunately for the United States, their sensors aren't always up to par. Number 6, S-400-S-300 Surface-to-Air Missile Systems The S-300 was a game-changer for the Soviet Union during the Cold War. It enabled them to drive a few trucks that were able to detect enemy planes, track multiple targets, and guide multiple missiles to multiple targets at the same time. This was all accomplished simultaneously. It's like having anti-air rifles and shotguns in one package because they can carry both long-range and short-range missiles on board at the same time. They can carry both types of missiles simultaneously. The constant stream of improvements over the years has allowed the system to keep its full functionality. Although the S-300 is still an effective weapon, its successor, the S-400, is far more advanced. In addition to possessing the same level of power as the S-300, it is also capable of transporting a variety of missiles. In order to continue the comparison, it targets American jets while also carrying a submachine gun and a shoulder-mounted automatic weapon. It is possible that it will be able to detect and track F-22s and F-35s, but this is not something that can be said for certain. The range of the missile could be increased to a maximum of 250 miles with upcoming weapons. It is possible that during a conflict, Things will devolve into a race between jets and air defense operators to see who can discover and kill the other first. However, Russia is able to build and export missiles more quickly and effectively than we are able to build jets. Number 5, Kirov-class battlecruiser. The Kirov-class was a nuclear-powered weapon that was used during the Cold War, but it does not get nearly as much attention as it should. Even though there are only four of them and they are getting on in years, they still have the ability to destroy American aircraft carriers while simultaneously defending themselves with anti-aircraft missiles. This was the primary purpose for which they were constructed, and they maintain this capability to this day. The Kirov-class warships are able to locate United States targets using satellite feeds and onboard helicopter or their own systems, and then hit those targets with 20 supersonic missiles carrying 1,653-pound warheads from a distance of up to 300 miles. It's true that American aircraft have a greater range, but the Kirovs are armed with anti-air missiles that are comparable to those carried by the S-300, in addition to anti-air missiles that have a shorter range, which makes attacks against them risky. In 1984, the ship named Frunzet became the second ship of its class to be commissioned. She served in the Pacific Fleet as her assignment. Her previous name was changed to Admiral Lazarev in 1992. 1994 marked the beginning of the ship's period of inactivity, which was followed by its decommissioning in 1998. 
The Russian Armed Forces and the Russian State Atomic Energy Corporation Rosatom signed a contract on 21 February 2021 to dismantle and scrap the nuclear-powered heavy cruiser. The agreement was made public on that day. On April 30, 2021, the Admiral Lazarev set sail for the 30th shipyard. The dismantling should be finished by 30 November 2025 at the latest. Number 4, Krasuka 4. Platform for electronic warfare developed in Russia known as the Krasuka 4. Blocking the enemy's lines of communication is always advantageous, especially in modern conflict, and although the inclusion of an electronic warfare platform on such a list may seem strange at first glance, it is important to remember that. It gives you the ability to disable ISR platforms and cut off the connection between forces in the field and their command as well as other assets. And that is precisely what the Krasuka 4 is designed to do, as it moves around the battlefield, it gives commanders a quick way to disable radars, network capabilities, and communications. It is not appealing, but if the opposing commander is unprepared, it has the potential to completely change the course of battle. Number 3, Ka-52 Alligator. Kamov Ka-52 is a Kamov product. Despite the fact that it is commonly known as the world's fastest military helicopter or quickest attack helicopter, its top speed is only 186 miles per hour, making it neither of these things, the Chinook is faster. In addition, it can destroy tanks thanks to its 30mm gun, which is identical to the one found on American Apache helicopters, its 80mm unguided rockets, which are larger than Apaches, and its anti-tank missiles. Since the linebacker was deactivated, the Army has been without armored anti-air defense, so the Patriot and Stinger missiles would be used to defend formations instead of the linebacker. This is a less than ideal alternative to use when facing off against the enemy's assault helicopters. Number 2, Koalitsia 152mm self-propelled howitzer. Similar to the T-14 Armada, the Koalitsia 152mm self-propelled howitzer is a powerful weapon that Russia will be unable to purchase in large quantities for as long as sanctions and oil prices remain in the mid-range. However, in comparison to the Braveheart, which has a range of only 24 miles and the Paladin, which has a range of only 18, this one has a range of 43 miles. According to the reports, its automated turret is capable of firing anywhere between 15 and 20 rounds per minute. During a continuous conflict, a paladin's maximum rate of fire is 8 rounds per minute, and they are only allowed to fire once every 3 minutes after that. This gives the Coalitia a significant advantage in a fight between two batteries, which would normally be a draw. Number 1, Hypersonic Anti-Ship Missiles A MiG-31K jet from the Russian Air Force is currently transporting a high-precision hypersonic. These would be higher on the list, but the entire hypersonic missile versus ship threat is still hypothetical, and Russia has a history of lying about these and other cutting-edge weapons in the past. Therefore, the entire threat is still hypothetical. Therefore, you should take any statements made by the Russian military with a grain of salt, especially in relation to these missiles. On the other hand, Russia is working on the creation of a number of viable alternatives, such as an improved Brahmos, the Kinsel, and the Zircon. In the event that any of them become operational, they will be game-changers because they will fly so quickly that many anti-missile defenses won't be able to hit them, and they will punch with enough power that even small warhead missiles can cause massive damage. However, it is likely that successful missile deployments will not occur for many years. What do you think about this video? Do let us know down in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video and want to hear from us again be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go.